In our previous video, we took a look at how we solved homogeneous systems of differential equations. We're going to add to that in this video and answer the question of how do we solve non-homogeneous systems. And the nice part is we're really following the same rules that we saw with the homogeneous system. The catch is when we go through our system of equations, our L1x plus L2y equals f of t, and the L3x plus L4y equals g of t. And when we take that and set up our L1, L2, L3, L4 times x, is equal to replacing the first column with the f of t, g of t, keeping the second column the same, and our other determinants made up of L1, L2, L3, L4, this time times y, is equal to the first column keep the same because this time solving for the second variable will replace the second column with the f of t, g of t. And really the big difference now is that those second determinants with the f of t and g of t, because those are not zero, they're going to actually equal a non-zero value. And so we're going to have to use the method of undetermined coefficients or variation of parameters in order to solve for a particular solution. And then the general solution is the complementary plus the particular, just like we saw with second order differential equations in our prior chapters. So let's do one example where we do just that. We're going to solve the system of equations x prime equals negative 2x plus y minus cosine of 2t and y prime equals negative 3x plus 2y plus 2 sine of 2t. And so when we first move all the x's and y's to one side, we'll end up with an x prime plus 2x minus y equals negative cosine of 2t. And we'll end up with a 3x plus y prime minus 2y equals 2 sine of 2t. And we know we can write that with differentials by factoring out the x's and the y's, giving us a derivative plus 2 times x minus y equals negative cosine of 2t, and 3 times x plus a derivative minus 2y equals 2 sine of 2t. And then just like we did before, we can take this information and plug it into our determinants. Our first determinant is set up with coefficients. With the x's, we're going to do d plus 2, 3, negative 1 and d minus 2 times our variable x is equal to, and because we're solving for x, the first variable will replace the first column with negative cosine of 2t and 2 sine of 2t. The second column still remains negative 1 and d minus 2. Now we have a determinant set up to help us actually calculate our equation or function for x. Calculating the determinants, we have d plus 2 times d minus 2 minus 3 times negative 1 is a positive 3 times x. And then for the other determinant, we're going to have a de derivative minus 2 times a negative cosine of 2t minus the other diagonal becomes a negative 2 sine, so minus a negative becomes plus 2 sine of 2t. The left side is going to continue to simplify much like we simplified before. We've got a d squared minus 4 plus 3 is a minus 1 times x. On the right side, 
I'm going to go ahead and distribute this cosine of 2t, negative cosine of 2t, onto both parts. What I need to remember, though, is d stands for the derivative operator. So when we multiply negative cosine 2t by d, what that really does is take the derivative of the negative 2 cosine 2t. The derivative of negative cosine is positive sine of 2t times the derivative of the inside, which is 2. Then negative 2 times negative cosine is positive 2 cosine of 2t plus 2 sine of 2t. Continuing to simplify, I'll factor the left side to d plus 1, d minus 1 times x. And on the right side, we'll combine like terms. So we have a 2 cosine of 2t plus 4 sine of 2t. We've seen problems like this before. We know how to solve them. We just need to find uh, x complement by solving the homogeneous version and x particular using the method of undetermined coefficients. And then x complement plus x particular gives us the general solution for x. Solving the homogeneous version, d would be equal to negative 1 and positive 1. So x complement is equal to c1 e to the negative t plus c2 e to the t. For x particular, looking at the form of the right side, I would assume x particular is of the form a cosine of 2t plus b sine of 2t. And then we can find x particular prime is negative 2a sine of 2t plus 2b cosine of 2t. And x particular prime prime is equal to negative 4a cosine of 2t minus 4b sine of 2t. Looking at this function where we had the d squared minus 1, and I remember that d squared means a second derivative, so I have one second derivative. I have no d's, so there's no first derivatives. And I have negative 1 of just the regular x's. We can put that together and multiply out. And that will give us some cosine of 2t terms and some sine of 2t terms. For cosine, we've got negative 1a and negative 1b on the sine. 0 on the middle one, so that one basically goes away. Then we've got negative 4a on the cosine and negative 4b on the sine. Adding the cosines together, we get negative 5a. We want to end up with two cosines, so that has to equal 2. And so a must equal negative 2 fifths. Similarly on the signs, adding together we get negative 5b. On the signs I wanted to end up with 4, so b is equal to negative 4 fifths. Now we know what our a and b are in that x particular. x particular then is a negative 2 fifths cosine of 2t plus b which is negative 4 fifths sine of 2t, which means my general form for x is going to be x complement c1 e to the negative t plus c2 e to the t plus x particular, which is negative 2 fifths cosine of 2t minus 4 fifths sine of 2t. We'll mark that for use later because we're going to come back to that as we try and reduce from four constants down to two constants. But this is the general form of our x equation. We also are going to do our general form of our y. Using the same equations up above with the differentials in it. Now with y though, we're going to have coefficients of d plus 2, negative 1. 3, and d minus 2. 
This time times y equals, and since we're solving for the second variable, we'll keep the first column the same, and the second column is going to be replaced with the solutions of negative cosine 2t and 2 sine of 2t. And we'll solve it in basically the identical way that we solved the x equation. The main difference you're going to see is on the right side of the equation. We have d plus 2 times d minus 2 minus 3 times negative 1 makes it a positive 3 times y this time. On the right side, we're going to have a d plus 2 times a 2 sine of 2t minus, and if we subtract a negative, it becomes positive, 3 cosine of 2t. So the right side is going to look a little different as we simplify. The left side is going to be pretty identical. We have d squared minus 4 plus 3 is 1. y equals. As we distribute on the right side, d means take the derivative. The derivative of 2 sine is 2 cosine times an extra 2 gives us 4 cosine of 2t plus 2 times 2 is 4 sine of 2t plus 3 cosine of 2t. Factoring on the left side, we still get d plus 1 times d minus 1, y, equals the right side simplifies to 7 cosine of 2t plus 4 sine of 2t. Again, we know how to solve this equation for y complement and y particular. If d is equal to negative 1 and positive 1 on the homogeneous version, y complement is also equal to c3. Remember, it's a new constant. e to the negative t plus c4 e to the t. y particular, again, is going to have the form of a cosine of 2t plus b sine of 2t, which means y particular prime is equal to 2, negative 2, a sine of 2t plus 2b cosine of 2t, and y particular prime prime is negative 4a cosine of 4t minus 4b sine of 2t. Going back to our d squared minus 1 function, d squared means we've got a second derivative. There's no d's, so there's no first derivatives. There is a negative 1 on the y's. And when we do that, we'll end up with some cosine of 2t terms, and we'll end up with some sine of 2t terms. Again, a lot of this is going to be very similar between the two x and y functions, but they're not going to be quite identical, so we need to make sure we go through all the steps here. We have negative 1a on the cosine, negative b on the sine, 0, negative 4a on the cosine, and negative 4b on the sine, which means total we have negative 5a on the cosines, but we want 7, so it equals 7. a is equal to negative 7 fifths. On the sine, we've got negative 5b. We want 4 sines, so b is equal to negative 4 fifths, which tells us that y particular is equal to a, negative 7 fifths, cosine of 2t, plus b, which is negative 4 fifths, sine of 2t. And then y itself must be equal to y complement plus y particular. y is equal to c3 e to the negative t plus c4 e to the t minus 7 fifths cosine of 2t minus 4 fifths sine of 2t. And now we've got at least the general form for x and y. 
The one thing we have left to do then is figure out the relationship between the constants C1, C2, and C3, and C4 so that we can combine them into a single, or actually two, constants. Okay, to make this easier, I have copied both equations here on one screen. You might not need to do this because you have them on your notes in two easy-to-see places, but it was definitely off my screen, and this will be easier if I can see it. Also, I'm going to copy down the first equation that we worked with, which was x prime plus 2x minus y equals negative cosine of 2t. So what we're going to do is we're going to plug these functions into this equation. We could have picked the first or second equation. You get essentially the same result. It might look different, but parametrically it's the same. But we're going to look to see if we can reduce down from four constants of integration to two constants of integration. So first we need x prime. x prime is negative c1 e to the negative t plus c2 e to the t plus four-fifths sine of 2t minus eight-fifths cosine of 2t. Then we have plus two times x. And this is x just like it looks like up above, c1 e to the negative t plus c2 e to the t minus two-fifths cosine of 2t minus four-fifths sine of 2t. And then we have minus a y. y we found out was c3 e to the negative t plus c4 e to the t minus seven-fifths cosine of 2t minus four-fifths sine of 2t. And this should all equal, as I'm running out of space, negative cosine of 2t. I'm trying to squeeze it on one row. As we multiply this out, you'll notice the constants are only on the e to the t's and the e to the negative t's. They are not on the sines and cosines. I want to look at why that is. Let's look at what happens when we combine the sines and cosines first, even though normally we don't have to do this step. First, looking at the sines, notice I've got a four-fifths of a sine. This right here, we're doing the sines of two t's and all the coefficients. A four-fifths. When we distribute two through, we have negative two times four is eight-fifths on the sine and distribute the negative through, we end up with positive four-fifths on the sine. Four-fifths minus eight-fifths plus four-fifths is zero. Notice on the right side of the equal sign, there are zero of the sine of two t functions. Let's look at what happens with the cosines when we do the same exact thing. On the cosines of two t, Looking just at the coefficients, we have negative 8 fifths. Distributing the 2 through, 2 times negative 2 is negative 4 fifths. And distributing the negative through, a negative and a negative makes a positive 7 fifths. Well, negative 8 minus 4 is negative 12, plus 7 is negative 5. So I have negative 5 fifths, which reduced to negative 1. And notice on the other side of the equation, as squeezed in as it is, we have negative one of these cosine of two t's. If we've done everything right up till this point, all of the particular solutions should work out exactly as they should. It's a nice little check to do to make sure you're on the right track before you do the work of finding the relationship between the constants. So let's look at those relationships between the constants. Let's start with the e to the negative t's. We've got them in three different places. And so when we distribute, we get negative c1 plus 2c1 minus c3 equals 0. So 
which gives us just one C1 equals a C3 when I move it to the other side after combining like terms. And when we look at the e to the t's, there's three e to the t terms that we need to work with. After distributing, we get a c2 plus 2c2 minus a c4 equals 0. So 3c2 equals c4. Now that we know our relationship, we can go back and replace c3 with a c1 and replace the C4 with 3C2 to get our final solution to our system of equations. X is equal to C1 e to the negative t plus C2 e to the t minus 2 fifths cosine of 2t minus 4 fifths sine of 2t. And for the function of y, C3 is equal to C1 e to the negative t plus c4, which is 3c2's, e to the t, minus 7 fifths cosine of 2t, minus 4 fifths sine of 2t. And we've got our final solution to our system of equations. So really this video is not introducing anything new per se. What we're really saying is just continue with the processes that we saw before with variation of parameters or the method of undetermined coefficients to find the particular solution and then add that to the complementary solution to get the final solution for our system of equations. So take a look at practicing some of these in your book and come to class with questions. Thank you.